Well, here we are. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. It's Friday night. I don't usually get to do these because somebody else hogs the Friday night streams. Uh, but here we are. Uh, it's part two of the GMA GS-02F Pickup Buffalo build. And um, let's get that fired up, why don't we, huh? Uh, let's uh, check in, let me know where you're watching from, and uh, tell me <laughs> tell me how much better uh, it would be if I had somebody here reading comments for me. There you go. Alright, let's get rid of that background. And, um, yeah. You know what I did for the first time ever tonight was I checked to make sure that I could hear the audio on the stream before I hit live. So I knew that there wouldn't be any comments about not being able to hear me tonight. Check out the big brain on Brad. Um, so here's the chassis. Now, if you are following along from part one of this live build, you probably missed about 10 minutes of me actually putting this chassis together on another live stream, on a Wednesday night live stream. So what I'll do is I'll kind of go through what's been accomplished since that step. So we finished off with the shocks. That would have been done. Uh, they are in a bag, ready to go, along with the links, because we finished all that in the previous episode. And uh, then after that, we started on the uh, servo and uh, chassis mounted servo element which is this part right here which ended up being this part right here on the chassis uh, the pan hard is part of the front shock hoop oh, it's weird on my brain there we go hey you bruce how's it going uh and then uh we installed the uh sliders and some of the chassis elements uh some of these are just friction fit for now because there are more screws to be put in later uh, and then the servo that I'm using is a Spectrum S6245, which gives you about 270 ounce inches of torque at 7 volts. Uh, I'm just using the plastic servo horn that was included uh, because there is a ball stud on the end of it, as you can see there. Uh, that's how the drag link attaches, I guess. So that's what it is. Noob is Matt's Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Noob's going to be here tonight. It's a Friday. He's probably busy enjoying his evening. Uh, but there you go. That's the chassis. You can also see where the servo for the shifting gear or shifting part of the transmission is going to go to, and that's right there. Carlos Devia, thanks very much. Syracuse, New York here. Thanks for the build. I am now certain I won't be building a GMA Buffalo. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, they're honestly... it's Once you get it built, they're pretty good kits. I, I am... I am a fan, 100%. Uh, so there we go. That's moving on to that page. That gets all that done. And now we can put the chassis aside. Uh, it's like a baking show, right? This is done. Here's what it looks like done. Uh, okay, so let's put the chassis aside for a moment. And let's get to uh, the front universal shaft, which is going to require the front axle. Which was also finished in step one of this build, or part one of this live build. There is the axle. Let's zoom in a little bit for the sake of everyone's eyeballs. There we go. Your, oh, the Rebel truck. Yes, the Rebel truck came out today. And it is um, technically a Absima Sherpa. Uh, very similar because it, it it's basically the same chassis uh everything in fact it's the same kit same truck um but uh in speaking to jeff from rebel he did mention that they updated all of the plastics for the u.s specific model uh so and there are some other uh changes in there as well to make it a little more robust so uh that's interesting to see i don't have one um but i've always kind of i've always been interested in that uh in that sherpa so now that there is one available in the United States, or North America at least, uh, I'll be able to pick one up and get my hands on it and have it on the channel. Because I'm, uh, I'm keen to see it, actually. I really am. I always was. I mean, 
the price point uh, is RTR is what 469 which puts it up there with a lot of the other stuff on the market so I'm really keen to see uh, how it kind of stacks up against the competition um, yeah I am I'm definitely like a hundred percent interested and as soon as uh, they're available as soon as I can get my hands on one I will you hey psycho uh, you and noob was like watching Conan O'Brien and Andy Richter play off each other was I Conan <laughs> I hope I was Conan uh, they're calling for Threadlock, which is not included in the kit. Uh, they also call for Grease, which they do include. Uh, but I'm going to use my white Lithium Grease as per use. Um, only one mod. There's a couple here. I'm sure there's enough. I'm sure we'll be fine. We don't need a lot of mod intervention here on the SBG. We don't really get a lot of riffraff. Uh, okay, let's just get started here. Um... Now, like I said, uh, GMade does this sort of, uh, and Viterra did the same thing. They use the actual uh, outdrive from the drive shaft as the uh, pinion input. So um, it's a little bit different in the construction for sure, uh, but not necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just a different way of doing it. Mike J already got his message deleted. <laughs> Amazing. I like these live... Oh, my hair matches Conan's. Yes, that's for sure. In fact, it, on my personal Instagram, uh, when I wasn't able to get a haircut, uh, there are a few photos of me that look like Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien! All right. Quit mucking about. Get your drive shafts put together. Easy now. Watch who you are calling classy. <laughs> two. Number two. All right. I hope everyone's having a good Friday. It's kind of uh, it's kind of weird that Josh isn't doing a live stream tonight. Um, but you know that's uh, them's the breaks, right? When you have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any of those, so I'm here at home. Um, that's not true. I was going to go over to my friend's house tonight, but um, I just I kind of want to get this out of the way. If I'm honest, I just want to get this build done uh, so I can move on to other stuff. Got a lot of editing to do on some other videos. I got the mud truck video uh, part two that needs to be done. There's all kinds of stuff happening. Hmm. Why won't you go in? There we go. Hello from uh, Israel. Hello, BEGA661. Thanks for checking in. His channel is old news now. I agree. Nothing good. Oh, I need thread lock on these. It's Matt's card night. What's that? What's that mean? We don't care about Josh. That's why we're here. Excellent. I know you guys all tune in to the Friday night show just for Nicole. I know that. Nicole is comedy gold. Every time she's on, she says something that makes me laugh. It's usually at Josh's expense, which um, I absolutely love. That's like my favorite thing of all time. Uh, okay, we have got the front drive shaft uh, output or input on there. Let's do the rear. Rebel RC Jeep looked to have a four-link front with a three-link panhard rear. It's actually a four-link rear with a panhard, so that's a that's a five-link. I think that's how you refer to that, uh, and that isn't so out of the realm of reality. I know. Um, when you do a, a lift on a on a JL or JK, I think sometimes they do add that that rear panhard. I think that's fairly common, uh, but it's weird to see it on an RC car. That's for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of keen to see how it works. 
Hey Grimger, how are you? Um, what was the other weird thing about that layout? Oh, servo on axle. Which is kind of disappointing. Let's be let's be honest. That's not our usual uh, thing for uh, our our end of the hobby. I'd like to see chassis mounted servos, of course. But you can't uh, you can't win them all, and I mean you can't fault them either. They're I think the idea is there to just get this truck into the market. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll see upgrades or changes along the way or down the road. Who knows? Anything at Josh's expense is a good thing. Agreed. Agreed. Love to see a Watts link on a crawler. I don't remember what a Watts link is, but I, I, I'm going to presume it's mostly for comedy's sake that you're saying that. Jesse Schultz. So you're saying you could, I could get a Ripper and a Bomber and a no prep drag car from Josh right now. You could get... <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't own that home. So I'm sure there is a security system. <laughs> Richard at RC Driver. Uh, you mean Greg at RC Driver. Yes, Ryan. I have watched Greg's video. Um, but I mean, I knew all about this truck already because it's the Absima Sherpa, which I, I think is actually another rebrand of another existing uh, truck. So, so yeah. All right. Those are the inputs done. Let's see what's next here. Or rear universals, as they're calling it. Or universals. Is there a set screw for pin on drive shaft? No, the drive shaft itself actually covers up that pin so you shouldn't have to worry about that typically in this situation rather than using grease i would probably use like uh, that moo spray um, just so there's not a lot of stickiness that's just going to attract dirt that would probably be my usual plan but i am going as per the instructions all right, now I think we're probably just going to be finishing the rest of the drive shaft elements here, which is 100% true. So let's get on that. We're going to need a couple of bits here and some goodies. Try to use less this time so I don't muck it all over everything. Looks like a set screw in directions. Uh, it does? No, it's just a pin and a screw that... Uh, oh! Absolutely, yes, you are right. Thank you for that. Good eye, good eye. I'm going to go back in time. And use some grub screws. Thanks for that. That will also require, fiddle DD, that will require some thread lock. RC fun, I appreciate that. Thank you. Getting ahead of myself. Luckily, you can install those after the drive shaft's installed. Was I supposed to grease my Traxxas and SCX-102 driveshaft pivots? You should lubricate them. I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily grease them as, as per the instructions in this manual. These holes are so tight. <laughs> Reggie, how are you, buddy? So there. We are definitely on the home stretch. I mean, aside from body, which I probably won't tackle tonight. Uh, I may trim it tonight, but that'll be probably it. Because, 
you know, you got to paint it first and detail it and all those things. So um, I'll have to get to that at some later juncture. Uh, I hope Josh is having fun on his little getaway. I'm sure he probably misses... It was so weird to not have him on the live stream. Uh, Cody, yes, that's white lithium grease. Yeah, it was so bizarre to not have him on the live stream. I was like... I think this is the first time ever that he hasn't... That's the first one since episode one. It's absolutely crazy to me. That we went that long. It's a good streak. You guys use grease? <laughs> okay, there's one. And that goes... Oh, we need the transmission! There it is. Uh, which direction do they want this? Here we go. So that's this output. Where are my longer set screws? We'll never know. No, 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 no. Nope. Guess we won't be doing that step. Unbelievable. I really do hate hunting around for these things. Sir. Maybe they don't exist. They have to. Hmm. I'm check the rest of the... Oh, maybe they're in the bag that these parts came in. No. Josh, going to a wedding could lead to your divorce. Hey, there's chair squeaked, so I think everybody has to take a sip of something. Is that, if that's how this game works, anyway. I hate this game. I hate the looking for stuff game. First game ever. Where the heck are they? So annoying. This build's over. <laughs> Blind guy, thanks very much. Uh, hey man, here's five dollars for something tasty. Mm. I'm hoping you get my Baja Ray video done this weekend. Tonight, this and Sons of Anarchy plus Japanese food. All right. That sounds like a perfect evening. I have to resort to my leftovers bin here. See what I can find. That's weird. They must be here. I'm probably just completely overlooking them. But not to worry, I've got lots. Some are a bit janky, but they'll do the job. Hey, 
Any idea when part two of the Mud Blazer build is coming? Um, probably next week. Probably next week. I've got uh, I got to film that this weekend, um, but there will be significant upgrades in that one. Lots of fun stuff happening on that truck. Um, some interesting requests too, so it'll be it'll be kind of fun, definitely. I'm looking forward. Uh, yeah, Holmes. I wonder if he'll do a two-in-one. It sort of seems like it's a natural progression of things, right? Like, I'm. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him come out with one. Oh my gosh! What is the deal here? It's like a proprietary size. Impossible. I'm just using crappy bolts, maybe. Nope, that doesn't fit either. What the heck? Serenity now. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, there they are. Good, I found them. <laughs> What a nightmare. And they are. They're like a proprietary size. Even though they're 3 by 10 they're slightly smaller. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, I say. Oh, perfect fit. <laughs> Alright, so that's the front. And then this... Where's the longer one? Because I didn't build the longer one yet right here okay two the mud truck needs drifting tires on it Mike J you've got good ideas we should make something goofy like that happen it's only fitting right that I ruin a perfectly good mud truck by doing something goofy. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm building a truck. It's been a very long week for me. Um, it's been pretty busy around here, getting a lot of projects completed for clients. Uh, which is always, uh, it can be an interesting process for sure. Uh, there's a lot of steps involved uh, in what I'm doing and a lot of people who need to see those things to sort of approve them. So um, more often than not, I'm, I'm never showing, like the first cut that I share isn't always the one that is approved. But it's generally the one that gets played with a lot and looked at and then eventually we come back to that version and that's the one that we do finish. So they, as a, as a client, my clients like to see everything, see how it works in the edit and then kind of try a bunch of stuff. And then eventually they decide on a finish or how to finish it. So yeah, it, it's a, it's a fun process. I really like my job. It's very creative, but it's not creative like this, it's not like constructing things, building stuff is in my opinion, a lot more fun. Because it's tangible. I get to work with my hands, not just sit in front of a computer. I got the grub screw. Thank you, RC Fun. Oh, is that the wrong side? No. There we go. Wish the Vanquish metric tools came with the silver handles instead of the black ones. The silver ones look so good. They do. I like I like the black handled stuff though. I think it looks pretty good too. It the patina that you develop on them looks really good too after a while. Like it gets quite shiny because they get used so often. Alright, now we can put that back drive shaft on for the rear of the truck. 
There we go. What do you do for a job? Uh, Blind Guy RC, I work in, uh, I'm a, a film editor by trade, and uh, I work mostly in advertising and uh, TV commercials. Uh, but I do, I have done in the past music videos, short films, long format films, pilots for TV shows, all kinds of stuff all over the map. All right, so now we've got those drive shafts on and you see that they do rotate in an opposite uh, format from each other. What's going on there? Oh, they're a little tight. Weird. Seems super tight. Not in a good way. Why so tight? It's weird. It works in video and not print. It shows. <laughs> I spent all day on camera today. Zoom calls. That is so bizarre. Look at this. It doesn't want to like rotate around itself very easily. Is the grub screw too tight? Oh, the grub screw's probably just not in the right spot. Right. I didn't see a flat spot on those things though. That's weird. Maybe they just don't they don't want it to be super tight. Bizarre. Yeah, totally fine now. Okay. Moose Jaw, are you here? Hi, Moose Jaw. Mr. Joe, cheers. Is that transmission heavy? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, it does place the motor up a little high, but let's see how it sits in the chassis before we make that decision. Uh, it's been a little while since I've built one, so I don't quite recall where it, where it sits here, but uh, let's zoom out a touch so we can get a better look at this. All right. It uh, basically uh, mounts to the chassis uh, skid with two holes. And there it goes, right there. Um, so you can see it's pretty similar to most uh, modern trucks in where that motor sits. It's tucked pretty low on the rail, not as low as it probably could be. Um, but it's, it's not bad. I mean, for what is primarily, I would say, designed to be a trail truck, it's pretty good. There you are. Well, hi, do I know you? No, but there you are. <laughs> oh, Joe. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that was a... Actually, I'm not going to tell you. What movie was that from? Hey, RC Patina guy. What's happening? My dude. All right, let's get some 12 mil, 3 by 12 uh, flat heads here. That's going to attach our transmission to our chassis. I've got the Ooga Duga meter at eight. <laughs> uh, Matt, I bought those CEN spiked lug nuts and they bolt right up to SSD hubs. Oh, that's good news. For those of you who want to use them. Uh, I could see myself using them as like a, on a comp build just to be comedic. What do we need? Three by eight uh, wrench bolt here. Uh, those should be easy to find. Three by six, three by eight, flathead, flathead. <sighs> Three by twenty, three by fifteen, three by twelve, three by eighteen. They must be out of the package somewhere. Oh, there they are. Cool. 
Sounds like Austin Powers. Yes, correct. Watts linkage is part of the rear suspension used to locate the rear axle laterally underneath the car. Interesting. I like the sound of that. Make sure the pin in the CBD is centered up. I know, but I don't think there's actually, like, I don't think there was a flat spot on them. I'll double check, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there wasn't. Actually, can we do, can we do some surgery here? I don't see a flat spot. Let's look. You know what? Better to do it, have done it right than to not do it at all. What are you doing? All right. You know the drill. I know I know what Complex Cat is doing. He's aiming to get himself timed out from this chat. Hello, Dana. <laughs> there, you, there you go. That's a great way to introduce yourself to this channel. Now let's see. Is there a flat spot on that pin? There is not. I knew it. So, weird. Right? Yep. I'm just checking the other pins just to see if they have a flat spot. I'm using the wrong ones, but they do not. Uh, weren't you going to do the scale news? No, that's next week. Ugh, which I, I don't want to do it. If I'm completely honest, I do not want to do the news. It's a lot of work. Josh is always griping about it. Keeps saying stuff like, nobody cares, nobody watches the news, everyone hates that show. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't say that. But... Um, hello, computer. Oh, this is the wrong size. Driver. Um, so, no, I'm going to take care of the news next week. That's the, that's the plan anyway. And some people already know that and have been very help, helpfully sending me stuff to use in the news. But... I'm going to probably go out on my own and do my own news broadcast where, you know, nothing really of interest happens. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a, a false news uh, show or something where all the stories I, I do are conjecture and rumors. <laughs> or just completely false. So once you've mounted the transmission to the chassis with those two bolts on the skid, there are two more that kind of keep it uh, horizontally located here. Just on the side there, as you can see, boop, right there. Scale news update, honestly one of my favorite videos. I agree, I really enjoy watching the news. I get a real kick out of it. Uh, Josh is uh, really, really good at that despite not being good at just about everything else, uh, he does a great job on the news. The faux school scale news update, exactly. FSCN, FSNU, FSNU. All right, what am I putting in here next? Some sort of box. Uh, like, the, like the bomb before it, uh, it has a lot of boxes that I can't really discern the, the purpose for. Like, there's an electronics box that can go back here, uh, which I think is the one we're in installing now. And then there's, like, another box. Uh, they also include parts for the old uh, bomb on here that you don't use anymore, like the battery tray. And this box, this is the smaller box that used to go underneath the transmission. Vanquish is making CR01 parts. 
What if I told you that was true? Tamiya switching to new connectors. There's going to be all sorts of good comedy, but we're not going to spoil it. Spoiler alert. There are no spoilers. 3 by 12. 3 by 18. 3 by 12. Here we go. Receiver box and a weight box. Yes. Uh, that was on the on the bomb. On the GSO2, you only use the electronics box, I think. I think. I don't recall. It's been a little while. Okay. So let's install this receiver box. They want you to put it in this orientation with the tabs, the cutouts on this side. So far, so good. Josh is working for Tamiya. <laughs> he quit his job at Horizon to go work at Tamiya on their new comp crawler. <laughs> All right, that's in. Now on to the links. And I guess it's the front links, which we're going to have to go back and see which ones they are, because I, I made them all, but they're all, you know, loosey-goosey in this package, so I have no idea which ones are which, or for what. If I recall, the ones with the notches are for the upper links, I think. Let's just go back and read. We're doing the front first. Rear upper, rear lower, front lower. Are these guys? Okay, okay, good. And I'm noticing some oil on the links, which means the shocks are already leaking. So that's good news. <laughs> Oh boy, front upper link appears to be this one. Yes, okay. That's all we need, so let's start that. Hey, side piece, it's going well. It's going well. <laughs> no, it's going well. What do we need? 3 by 25 and a 3 by 20. 3 by 25. We need two of those. Element cuts a sticker deal. Everyone's got a sticker deal with me already. Well, not everyone. A lot of people, though. 3 by 20. I have SBG stickers in a lot of the element kits. Uh, except the Night Runner. That's a long transmission. It, it is quite long. Mostly in the transfer case portion here, there's like one long shaft that runs between here and here. Uh, let's do the front link, which is this top link here. That's nice. I like not fighting with a link to get into a, a tab that it's uh, made for. That's it, Dana. Pre-hate it. <laughs> you don't have to. No, you, I'm, I'm just messing. And then these are the lower links, so they go in the lower holes. And I think you want to have these splayed in. Yes. Yes. Oops. You see that okay? Yes, you can. I need to see the... the uh, instructions though so I'm like gotta move this around a little bit 
Are your tattoos one big theme? No, I, no, not really. They're sort of all over the place. I mean, they all mean something. But they're not like, it's not all one cohesive story that, you know, like ties it all together. All right. That's the front. And oh, reminder, if you weren't watching episode one, and you should go back and watch it so you can see how the rest of this goes together. Uh, these are the upgraded stainless links that uh, G made sent me. So those wouldn't n normally be included. Uh, what you would get would be standard aluminum links, which are, you know, they're no slouch either. Uh, they're, they're actually quite nice and lighter. But I like the stainless ones. They do offer a little bit more weight down low where you want it. Let's do the rear links now. Which are obviously going to be these longer ones. What's this link for? That one feels like aluminum. Oh, these are the steering ones, right? Never mind. Never mind. Need to rotate that front link. Do I? Oh yeah, this one's... There we go. It's actually loose. It loosened on itself. <clears throat> there. Better. Uh, lowers have the thingy. And where's my orientation document for this? Oh, yes. There you are. I think we're using the same wrench bolts for that. Which have obviously gone missing. 3 by 25. RC Steve. You know what's nice about Nicole not being here is that nobody's yelling at me. The other thing is, Rebecca would never even bother to come down here. <laughs> she, there's, she has zero interest in in being on this, and I don't, I don't blame her, necessarily. Now, do these flare in? I can't remember. No, they flare like this. There we go. There we go. Uh, what do we need here? Three by twenty again. Why would I why would I put everything away? Why would I keep everything out? Because I'll probably never need those again. 3x20, they're there. How much to have her come down and yell at you? <laughs> well, I think she's got a friend over, so uh, there's probably not much chance of her actually coming down here at all. She only comes down here with the dog. recommendations for boat sides for a TRX-4? Boat sides, eh? Uh, I know that there's a couple of uh, 3D printing guys that make stuff, but I don't know if it's specifically for the TRX-4. Okay, I bet we're putting axles on now. Mm -hmm. Yep, what do they want to start with? Front. Okay, I can do that. Three by fifteen. Okay, let's hunt for those. Ah, I didn't have to hunt very much at all. This is the most interesting show ever. 
Who said that it wasn't? Did I say that? That doesn't sound like something I would say. Oh, maybe I did though. All right, front axle. I guess they're gonna want us to put the drive shafts together too. My workspace is such a mess. Now remember to keep your drive shafts in phase when you're putting these together. I think this one's too long. Unless they want all that space between them. Uh, that doesn't look right. Oh, maybe that is. Two thumbs down say so. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the reality check. Somebody out there doesn't like me. Mm, that's okay. Long weekend in Canada, that is correct. I'm going to try to get out there, I think. Now, bottom hole? Or top hole? Oh, do I have these on upside down? I think I might have these on upside down. Not once have I ever gotten that right on this truck. I've only had two opportunities to do it, but no, that's correct. This one's on upside down. Idiot. There's a fire, and I can only grab two trucks. Ooh, this is a great question for everybody. Uh, there's a fire. Not right now. There's no real fire. But assume that there... Let's say there was a fire. Hypothetically speaking. There's a fire. And everyone's already in safety. You know, you didn't have to, like... You know, your, your wife is fine. Your pets are fine. Everyone's fine. They're fine. Don't worry about it. They're fine. But you can have... You have an opportunity to get two RCs before everything's consumed by fire. What two are you going to grab? For me, it'd probably be the Ripper and the steam truck, probably. Because the steam truck is useless. <laughs> and I want to share that uselessness with somebody else at some point in the future. <laughs> Um, it would be a toss-up between the steam truck, the half-track, and the West-made mail truck, I think. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would grab. Ripper's on that list for sure. But tell me in the chat. Let me know. Two per hand? Hey, Brad, how are you? Two per hand. Uh, whatever you can carry, but it has to only, it can only be two. So, choose carefully, or wisely. But, yeah, that's what I would choose. That's easy. I only have an SCX-24 and a half-build SCX-10-2. Okay. There you go. That's your answer. It's going to be different for every build. Origin and Pro. Oh, that's a good call. Yes, definitely. I forgot about the origin. Mine was a prototype too. So I probably definitely want to keep that one. 3x15, 3x15, and 3x15. Okay. Another 3x15 for the top shaft, or top uh, link. I only have two TRX-4 and SCX-24. How dare you make us pick our favorites? Well, that's the challenge, right? I mean, everyone else is already safe, so you gotta choose something. Okay, that's the... F that looks terrible, what's going on there? That 
can't be right. Something is very wrong. Those links are the right size. That. Oof. Something's odd. Well, let's just leave it for now. Doesn't that look weird to you? It's definitely on an angle. One of these links is different. It does look a little off, doesn't it? <laughs> it's looking a lot bit off. All these links are the same size. So it's not that. What in the what? That's weird. Because we still have to put the pan hard on. It has to be the top link. I'm just checking link lengths here. Eight. Those are the same, so it's... Upper link looks like it's in the wrong spot. Agreed. 100%. Looks like it should go on the outer portion, but that's not right. Upper's too long. Well, let's double check that one. That's why we build kits together. <laughs> Rear upper. Front upper. Yep, it's too long. No, that's the right length. Weird. Huh. And it's supposed to go that way, yeah, front, rear. Maybe it's the drive shaft that's forcing it. it must be. Maybe the inner, uh, maybe it does need to be the shorter inner piece. Let's try that anyway, yes. Panhard missing could be the cause, yeah. No, the, the rod ends are the same length. They're all good. Yep, it was the drive shaft. All good. We're all good now. How are you? I'm glad that was an easy fix. It's always something simple. Yes, Travis, that was a Star Wars reference. Ah, that's much better now, yes? Indeed. Cool. Rear axle. It's a rear axle. 3 by 30. That's a long one. And by that rationale, it should be easy to find. Three by thirty-five. Three by eighteen, twenty. Jeremiah Salberg, thank you, sir. Would ten two rear links work with my SCX ten deadbolt? 
Uh, also, have you, been, have you been driving? See a pile of rocks and think that could be a fun crawl. Yes, all the time I think that. Uh, as for your links, uh, I can't say for sure. I don't remember how different the geometry was between those two models. Uh, but why not try mocking it up and seeing how far off it is? There's no way a 3 by 30 exists. Apparently it does, though. And there's only one of them. There it is. Excellent. This desk is a mess. Yeah, just measure the links that you have currently is uh, what um, Butch suggests, and probably a very good suggestion. Eight. It's the longer one. Element Ecto on your list. No, Dana, it's not. Um, I don't really, like I already have a gatekeeper as well as um, the new Night Runner, so I think I'm good right now on Element stuff. Um, I don't like the look of the Ecto all that much. The body isn't too shabby, but it's not really my, not my bag, baby. Fifteen. It's a good thing you didn't have to mirror the motor mount. Yes. <laughs> hey, RC Steve, how are you? RC Noob just started. Oh, just starting. Purchased a SCX-10 III Gladiator, but now I want another body. Any recommendations as to where to find one? Well, you kind of got yourself into a bit of hot water because that, uh, that Gladiator is an, uh, a much longer wheelbase. Um, so you might be a little bit hard-pressed to find something that's going to fit. Um, yeah, that's like... Is that where that link goes? What are you talking about? Yeah, these are... Uh. <laughs> See, that's why you guys are here. Help me, help m me, help me. <laughs> it's been a long day. Cut me some slack, Jack. We're getting it. Thanks. Thanks, Wes. I was like, that doesn't seem right. These things usually aren't angled like that. You do hear a kitty. She wants in here desperately, but all she does is come in here and steal something. She's a magpie. Anything shiny or metal, she takes it. And then you'll never see it again. She's a thief. A bad girl. But I love her dearly. But yeah, like she's got a stash of things behind the furnace. When the when we had our furnace replaced, the man was like, Did you need all these things? And I was like, he had a shoebox full of like pens and screws and all sorts of like little things that she's stolen over the years 3d printed bits she takes the stuff out of the garbage <laughs> like uh, out of my hobby garbage you want to see her she's the white one i don't know if she's still there or not Yes, that went in very nicely. All right, pan hard mount is going to be next. 
which is now gone. There it is. What do we need for that? Three by three by fifteen, three by fifteen, okay. At least she doesn't eat it. Well, funny story. She once ate uh, some thread that she pulled out of one of my wife's dresses. And uh, we didn't know what she'd eaten. And she wasn't eating. Like, she wasn't eating anything. Uh, and she wasn't drinking. And we were really, you know, obviously extremely worried about her. And we couldn't figure it out. And we couldn't figure it out. And we took her into a merge and spent a whole ton of money for them to be like, mm, well, we don't really know. Not really sure what it is. It's just like... Maybe lost the will to... And I was like, I don't know, man. She's a kitten. I don't, I don't really see that being the problem here. And my wife, bless her, was like, tell them to get another x-ray. There's something definitely like not right with her. And it's not a mental thing. So we did one more x-ray and she was full of thread. Like it had wrapped around her tongue and she couldn't swallow, but her, she started to actually like the intestines started to pull it. So it was like cutting into her throat and her tongue. It was so terrible. Uh, but they operated, pulled it all out of her and she made a full recovery and is still just as bad about stealing things. She learned no lessons whatsoever. <laughs> She's scum, but I love her to death. She's so great. And she's definitely my cat. I somehow got the dud. <laughs> 3 by 25. What else do we need here? hunting. It's so annoying. Hey, patina guy. Oh, you bought the seasonal vanquish reels, Ryan. Nice. Good choice. Seasonal. Are they going to do a Christmas one, do you think? Green and red? Blah. What a terrible choice that would be. I bet you it's like Josh's favorite color combo. Son of a bitch. I just need a 3 by 25 And it doesn't say it's a wrench bolt. It's just a round head. What was the you guys' question? How long do you think it would take you if you didn't have an electric drill to assemble this? Oh my god, dude. <sighs> that was the best thing I ever did, was invest in a good quality um, uh, power drill like this one. Honestly, I would... I don't think I would build as many kits as I do if I didn't have the right tool for it. Come on, 3 by 25 It's got to be here somewhere. This is infuriating. Maybe we need to take a break. Cleanse the palate of this nonsense. I don't even see a package for... Oh, there it is. She is a cat burglar. Yes, she is, Jesse. I hear her out there still. My, Ki my Akita would like to meet Snooky. Watches that cat all the time. I bet you, I bet you that cat could eat that dog. <laughs> that is one scary cat. Which is the bigger one? Chief, I think, is going to be the bigger one. Is that right? I don't know. Oh, they want one of these to not have a thing in it. Okay. We can make that happen. Got to get Tony on here as a guest. I've had, we've had Tony on in the regular Wednesday night streams. Tony has been a guest. Uh, he's traveling today, though. He's going to some dumb monster truck thing. 
some dumb monster truck thing that nobody cares about. <laughs> He's still going. I kid because I love. Not monster trucks. I don't like those very much. It depends on the. It would depend on the monster truck. I did not enjoy putting together the SMT10. I felt like that one was a bit on the weak side of things. But I bet you that LMT is a much more nice truck. Three by twelve. Three by ten. Three by twelve. Oh, we have the other dog over tonight. I can hear him barking. Alex, Alex's best friend is that, uh, oh, you're painting Tony a truck. That's cool. Um, he's, what kind of dog is he? A Brussels Griffin. And he barks a lot. But he's cute, so we let it slide. All right. Those are the links and steering elements done. Inner fenders. Nice addition. Forgot that this truck had those. Let's open that box bag up. You just bought an SMT 10. Side piece, there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's so long in the tooth, and from what I've been told, if you run it really hard, you will need to upgrade things. But most people upgrade these things. Did someone suggest a live build-off? Oh, Dave Trevino. Maybe you and Josh could do a live speed build contest. First to finish wins. You know what? For a mayhem, I really, really, really like the sound of that. That is, that could be very, very fun. That is a great idea. I will definitely suggest that to Josh. And if I forget on Wednesday's stream, somebody remind me. Because that's a great idea. I would definitely be down for that. Three by 12, okay. So the reason, way back when, when I was putting this chassis together, they don't have you put a screw in the other part of the shock mount or shock hoop, is that the inner fender actually, it becomes that other mount point. So there you go. We need a 12 and a 10 on the front. Okay, no problem. Cool. Matt speaks Canadian. <laughs> Can some of you teachers teach Matt proper English? What are you talking about? I speak good. Okay, that sounded like there's too many Ooga Doogas on that one. I do feel quite smart for how I routed, or at least how I mounted the motor. Uh, so all the wires tucked in nicely behind that uh, shock hoop. SMRT. I mean SMART. Matt gets an RC10. Josh gets a cross RC. Yeah, Josh has to build the mammoth. <laughs> and I get uh, like a, a Tamiya. Uh, what's the like holiday buggy or something? It's only got like 10 screws in it. <laughs> oh, flange nuts. What? What kind of world are we living in? Is this a Tamiya kit? Forgot about the flange nuts. 3 by 12, yeah. Middle hole. Flange nuts, honestly. What an interesting choice. You're the boss. A 
And then a 3x8. That's a 10. Oh, here's the 8s. Okay. I think it should be a kit that neither of you have built yet. Oof. Well, that's getting to be a challenge because between Josh and I, I think we've built pretty much everything out there. Flange nut again? Gross. Oh, I heard kitty. Let me see if I can grab her here. She probably wants to come in here. Because at least she knows she'll be away from the dogs. Let me see. You want to come in? Come in here. Come on. Hi. Yes. Kitty. <laughs> Hi, kitty. You want to steal something? Okay. Oh, now you want out. Okay. Out you go. Hi, dog. Oh, it's a rotating thing of animals. Hi. Come up here. Yes. There you are. Oh, invisible dog. There. Hi. Hi. Is your friend here? Is it a friend? Are you leaving now, or are you going to stay here? No. You want out too. Okay. Rotating door. See you later. Ah, lucky me. Just wanted to say hi to the fans. <laughs> Dad opened the door. Yeah, we did. I love my animals. 12 and a 10. She's uh, very chatty. She, uh, and I'm her, I'm her human. So that's kind of nice. Kind of dog. He's a, he's a Labradoodle, apparently. We had his DNA tested, because he's a rescue, so we didn't really know much about him. But he's like 67% Poodle, and the rest Labrador. But to look at him... He doesn't really look like that much Poodle. Uh, my dog does not like the RC trucks. Um, in fact... I ran one in the house once, and he refused to come into the basement for what seemed like forever, so I kind of gave up on that. I don't think that's ever going to be a thing for him, unfortunately. That's okay, though. Have you guys built the CR18 Harvest Builders Edition? No. 18 scale would be fun for the challenge because it would be quick. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning that way. That's a good idea. Flange nuts again. Hey, there's James from Night Customs. Hello. What about building clodbusters? You know what? Neither of us have built a clodbuster. Do it for Tony. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I like the clodbuster idea. The CR18 is good too because it's uh, it would be a quick build. 
Like a clod buster, I think might be like that. Might be more than a than an afternoon. Oodle breeds are the best. I agree. He's a very good dog. He actually was a bit of a hero last night. We were out uh, walking, as we do for our evening walk. And a dog from up the street that we know, I'm just walking along, and then all of a sudden, this dog I know is running down the street by itself. And I'm like, that is not a good sign. Uh, so I kind of, I noticed that the owner who is, uh, you know, an older, older woman, uh, is kind of running after the dog and calling the dog and dog's just running like crazy, but he's like stopping every few minutes to try to pee on everything. It's like he hadn't been outside in forever. It was very weird. And so I was like, that's not right. So I started to go, Alex and I started to go after the dog and we kind of cornered the dog and Alex and him had a bit of a thing and they didn't really get along for a second, but I held onto the dog long enough that this woman could catch up and, and get the collar and leash on and uh, sort of keep the dog under control. And as it turns out, the dog had escaped and um, was kind of like trying to run away. So by us catching the dog, I think we kind of prevented a big accident from occurring because it was getting close to a major intersection. And uh, I think if we had not been there at that moment, things could have been a lot worse. So that was kind of fortuitous that we were out at that exact moment that the dog got out. I think this battery is dead. Not to worry. I've always got one ready. <laughs> Don't forget to charge that one. All right, so now we're just installing one of the um, uh, sort of like, I don't know, this sort of like adds some strength to the overall chassis and to the inner fenders as well. Um, it also offers an opportunity to install a fan if you wanted to. Um, it wouldn't fit under there, so I think you would have to put it on top. Uh, but nice that that's uh, an option if you are running a extremely hot motor or doing some extreme ass crawling. Oops. Almost lost that. I missed the first episode of this because I was in school at night. Some sort of nighttime school. All right, so there we go, that's that. Then there is one for the rear as well. Or he wanted freedom, yeah, maybe. I think I think the reason he was uh, so aggressively running and trying to pee on everything was that he may have had a bladder infection. And it's like, I'm not like a doctor or veterinarian or anything, so. Oh, you're in Australia. So, Mitch, it's Saturday. Welcome to the weekend. It's the weekend. So, yeah, I think he was... Medically, there was something going on there. So, I'm kind of hoping that he is okay. I'm just glad we got him. Amazon budget build-off. Hey, Stabby Josh, how are you? No kits, no RTRs, just parts. <laughs> That's an interesting idea. Judging based on one-tenth quarter mile, top speed, climbing angle, pulling power, and of course, looks. Oh, man. That's really interesting. We could do like... Instead of Amazon, let's make it interesting. Let's just do the Wish version. <laughs> now, that would be something. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. We have like, 
we have like a time limit on the amount of time to actually get all of the parts in too. Oh, it's Crawl for a Cure this weekend. Thanks, Perry G. Watching while getting ready for Crawl for a Cure. Have you seen that uh, crazy Vanquish pink VS410? That is just awesome. I love that. It turned out so good. That's a really exciting build. All right, what are we doing? Front shocks. We need 13, not 14. The spacer, 13. Where are my clippers? There they are. All parts are free off Wish, but $20 in shipping. <laughs> I wonder what we could come up with, like a like a true budget build. But you have to buy all the parts at once, and whatever you get, you get, and that's your truck. <laughs> Electronics included. That would be hilarious, I think. I like that idea a lot. And there's a fourth one hiding in here. There you are. All right, what are we doing here? Three by 18. That's probably a new package. I haven't opened yet. Yes. Moose Jaw, you did a killer job on that, that paint. Was that using your Crick Cut or your Cry Cut? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. The Banggood budget build off. Darwin, yeah, you're on to something there. These are all good ideas. There's no bad ideas here, people. Why won't you go in there? The shock is already moist. Oh wait, spacer. And they want it in the front hole, but I'm gonna put it in the back hole. <laughs> I think I just won the day with that comment. blindfold build off. Maybe we buy the parts for each other. <laughs> There's a lot of possibilities here, so, you know, keep keep thinking on it. Okay, that's one shock on. Time out for me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a shock on there. Okay, let's move on to the other side here. I mean, what I said wasn't that dirty. Doing crawler build offs, drag build offs. What about combining the two? Capable crawler, swap tires, and run the quarter mile. Again, not a bad idea. There's no bad ideas tonight. There's the Cameo Silhouette 4 Plus. Ooh la la. What did I get? I got the cr the Cricket Explore Air 2. It does the same thing. It doesn't sound as fancy though. That's for sure. 3 by 15s on the back instead of 12s. Cuz why would you use the same thing? 
Why would they do differently? That's weird. I only have one one of those in here. No, there's the other one. All the same. <laughs> Mine was probably more expensive for no reason. Uh, yes, Pauls, we uh, definitely saw the Rebel RC, uh, what are they calling it, RebelCon? Um, it is the Absima Sherpa, uh, just um, rebranded, and, and I, don't, I don't mean just rebranded, uh, I, like I said earlier, I spoke to Jeff and he actually mentioned that they went in and made a lot of adjustments for the North American release of that vehicle, so uh, it does have some significant differences in it, which is nice to hear. And uh, he's very excited about that. I don't uh, have one yet, but I've always been sort of interested in seeing that Ebsema Sherpa, so this is my opportunity to get one now. So I'll definitely be uh, looking into that as soon as uh, they're available. I guess they are available. If I'm mistaken. I think it's like release slash here they are. Slow. So that's good. And if that's the case, that's that's really good. I like seeing things uh, released and available same day. Will you show the body? I'll show the body. Uh, it's the pickup truck version of the of that sort of GM or Chevrolet kind of knockoff-ish looking truck. It's close, but it's not licensed. But yeah, once we get to that point, I'll show it off. What do you feel might be the next big game changer? Well, hard to say. There's been a lot of significant innovations over the last, say, five, ten years. It's getting harder and harder to come up with new stuff, really. All right. All the axles, links, shocks, everything's installed and moving properly, so that's good to see. There is a bit of flex in the chassis, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's not nearly as robust as, say, an SCX-10 III or not anywhere close to a Vanquish truck. Um, but, uh, you know, you do, uh, you do save a significant amount of cash on this kit over those ones, so it's to be expected. Uh, sliders be here somewhere. Here they are. And another bag with more screws in it. You use 80 mil shocks in your buffalo, so it sits quite low then. It's not a bad idea. I like that. Those plop in there. And we're just going to lightly screw them in, not all the way. So we have a little bit of freedom to move them around once we get the body on. Set those afterwards. Once we get these on, I think we're going to be doing the shift servo, which is where that uh, servo saver comes into play. All right, you put that on upside down. No, I didn't. No, I didn't, Tim. Those are the. That's the right way. Smooth side down. <laughs> Left, right. I got them in the right place. <laughs> Is that a Nixon watch? No, it's an iTelephone watch. Apple phone. It's an Apple phone for jerks. Servo saver spring. Uh, three mil washer. Why do I feel like that's going to be impossible to find? Oh, not so impossible after all. 
Is the body unpainted? Yes, Carlos. I'm going to do uh, the Mr. Plow, um, <laughs> Mr. Plow livery, if you will. Uh, it's just going to be a red truck that says Mr. Plow on the back. That's it. Now what spline is this servo? I'm just using a random servo that I had in here. 25. Tooth spline. And that's already centered. And they want it this way. Okay. Good. Let's zoom in a little bit for this. Mr. Plow, it's about time. I know. I know. Then this goes... Wait. This goes this way. And this goes on there. And then the spring goes in the hole. And then the cap. It's nice that there's a servo saver on the two-speed cap goes on, then, whoa, whoa, washer, then a 3 by 18 which there's probably only one of, hate searching for this stuff, please G-Maid, next time you do this, Package everything with each step. Be so much easier than me hunting around like a goofball. There it is. What's my favorite episode of The Simpsons? There's so many. There's so many that are really good. Um... I like the Die Bart Die. That one's a really good episode. Preset to neutral, because I'm a smart dude. All right. Then this will eventually go on this truck. We need some more pieces first. Under the side cutters. Thanks, Clyde. What else do we need? This doodad. Oh, my back. All this pain for you. For you guys. I do it for the kids <laughs> and the cat. I do it for the kids and the cat. Um, okay, let's do this in the right order here. This goes like this. So 12s. One, two, three, four. Mike J. But that cost G made money? Yes, all the parts are on incorrectly. Oh, I see, Tim. I get it now. <laughs> okay, let's get this closer so you can see the installation of the two-speed shifting servo. More Oogadoogas. I don't remember who coined that phrase, but I love it. Okay, now this next part is the part that 
requires some what? Hmm. Huh? What? That's supposed to go through there? This is not the right piece. What the heck? There was only that piece. Weird. GM six zero two two one niner. I'm not seeing. Oh shit! Damn it! There is another one. The proper one. Here's a servo saver. But there's two servo saver arms for you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, it's not the worst case thing in the whole world. It's pretty easy to fix that. But still, like... What are you doing to me here? <laughs> Oh, weird. Easy enough to fix, but still, like, one of those, like... Why, did, why exactly did you do that? Here's, here's all the parts you'll need for this kit. And then here's some other parts that you won't need for this kit. And I mean, I know that's, like, the economy of scale. Like, Axial you know, gives you all the parts for, like, as an example, you'll get all the body clip, or all the body posts for ones you're not using. All right. All good. A simple fix. Language. Did I say a bad word? What the fudge? What the heck? All right, so let's get that back there a little bit. And then this piece goes in here to lock this whole thing in place. Sorry, let me move that over. Uh, and then we're gonna put a bolt through the top there, a 12 mil. Just like that. There we, there we go. Shifting servo. All good. Cool. Is there any better options out there for a leaf sprung truck than a TF2? No. <laughs> I don't think there is. Not one that uh, I'd recommend at this point that I can think of. I mean, well, the G made. Um, Whatchamacallit, uh, their leaf sprung truck. What is it called? <sighs> what is that truck called? Uh, okay, so real quick here, I'm going to skip this step because I'm not going to put uh, the uh, electronics in quite yet. Because obviously, you can't see that, obviously the ESCs uh, from the 2-in-1 the from the uh, Spectrum uh, ESC uh, motor combo isn't long enough to go into the receiver box. Because why would it be? So, so we're not going to probably be using that receiver box. Uh, we'll probably just end up putting the receiver right here because there's plenty of space there. And then I'll just do that trick, which works really well when you wrap it properly. This is like old timey trick from uh, racing, racing days. I never raced, but I learned this trick. You do this, 
and then you can even like hit it with some heat and then what happens is eh, get off of there Maybe it's not going to come off now BRX01 isn't leaf sprung it's got coils I think and then look at that gets nice and coiled and stays coiled brilliant twirl the chingus <laughs> yes good old timey trick that always works that one top trick so that's what I would do and then you know we'll mount the power switch there and the receiver there and then battery tray I guess they want us to put that on this it'll go over here somewhere I think well let's just get to that step huh stop mucking about and make the battery tray already they have leaf options oh, okay cool yeah I you know what that's the BRX01 is one truck I have no experience with uh, I haven't gotten around to picking one up yet um Mo mostly because up until now you could only get it with the uh, Land Cruiser 70 series body which is 10th scale and I've built one of those and had a truck uh, that I put together with that body already but I always found it to be too small um, Larsman thanks for checking in so I kind of uh, avoided it because of that maybe to my own detriment but um, now I see that they've got one that's just the the chassis kit and I'm more interested in that than anything so I think I'll probably pick one of those up it's about time anyway I'm making a battery tray now which looks to go together like that worry about those in a second three by six flathead bolt right in front of my face for once I'll need two of those they're sticky yeah definitely works better if you hit it with a heat gun oops not there there this thing has to go on oh so it's a smaller battery tray I don't get it oh there we go yeah they don't show the nuts but you need some nuts M3 nuts What kit did you buy yourself for your birthday? I didn't actually. I bought myself nothing. So maybe I'll get that BRX01 chassis kit as my gift to myself. Happy birthday to me. Uh, I'm making this for a shorty battery because I've got a shorty battery. That should fit this just fine. That doesn't go in there, stupid. Yeah, uh, the stainless links are uh, definitely a good investment for this kit. The aluminum ones are a bit thin. Like, they feel thin. Okay. We need these wicked-ass long bolts, which are the 35s. Time is it 10 14 I think we're making pretty good time tonight uh, do me a favor hit the like button if you uh, would be so kind would greatly improve the algorithm or something <laughs> Install Velcro strap before battery tray is installed. Okay. I'll do that. $100 in 
hundred and four one hour and forty five minutes and not a slider yet. Screw hunting is hurting you. I think the sliders are on, aren't they? Now, what do they want me to do here? There we go. Okay. Now, where does this go? Front of truck. Looks like it goes right here. That's actually not bad placement for the battery, if I'm honest. Oops. That's actually not bad placement, right up here up front. Does maybe limit your interior options a bit, but I don't think they really designed this with an interior in mind. Oh, slider as in not a roller. Ugh. Course. Well, I mean, you know, there was a full other a uh, few hours. Oh, now we're building tires and wheels, which is boring AF. And there's a lot of nuts and bolts in here. Do we skip this and just put a pre pre-made set on there? <laughs> anyway, here are the tires. The foams are abysmal. They are really, really soft. Not even a circle, I don't think. I think they're actually, well, maybe they are a circle. Uh, but they're super soft. This is a knockoff of the uh, Super Swamper um, tire. So maybe we'll do one. I'm not going to run these, I don't think. Although I guess for the sake of running it in its stock form, maybe I should. Oof. Oh, you know what though? Bonus. It does come with scale hardware for the build. Will this truck body fit the Buffalo SUV chassis? Yeah, from what I understand, they're exactly the same chassis. No difference whatsoever. I will build one to get us through this. And they want you to start with these uh, not scale bolts so you can actually get the, the bead and the tire set first. It is a three piece plastic bead lock. So there's not gonna be a lot of weight. Skip, 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 skip. I'll do one, let's just do one just so we know how it goes for the sake of the process. You know, you gotta... What's going on in there? You again. All right, don't come in then. In, out, in, out. <sighs> okay, now you gotta find, because it's like one of these beadlocks where the, all the holes have to match up perfectly. What a pain in the butt. I already regret everything. But like I said, I'm only going to do one. That still isn't right. Jeez. Is that right? Yes. Okay, one, so we can have a look. And then you'll get to know if it's easy or hard. Oh, you were matching up fine just a second ago. Okay. Ugh, what a mess. Plastic bead locks. And like... <clears throat> Oh, 
Metal front? No, it's all plastic. The whole thing. I do not care for this. <laughs> I do not care for it one bit. Oh my god. I'm officially losing my mind. I don't want to build this at all. This is proving to be more frustrating than I want it to be. Because you have to... The spacing looks to be the same, but it's not, I don't think, for the bolt patterns. Oh my god. Okay, I think that's going to probably be close enough. Let's just get a bolt through it. Skip doesn't sound so bad now. No, it doesn't. You're right. But I said I would do one. Eh. Okay, that's together-ish. But I have to set these nuts back first. To the parts bin they go. Or maybe even to the never to be used again bin. Which is a much better bin. Once you get that done, yeah, the foams are not anything to write home about. It's not a heavy truck, but even still, I think these foams are pretty lightweight. Saving grace, though, it is nice that they come with scale hardware, at least. That's kind of nice. But they're not like... Hey, your Ford Bronco came in right on. That's nice out back. I like that truck. I'd love to see, like I said in the review, I'd love to see them do like a sport on the shorter wheelbase. I think that would be pretty cool. But that might be asking a lot. I guess he was just excited. I don't think we'll chalk that up to spam. I think the SCX-10 III interior would fit. Yeah, oh, definitely. No, I don't think you'd even need to trim it. I think it would just fit just fine. Um, yes, we're only gonna do one of these, because, uh, I don't want to do any more. And I think just by sheer luck, I got the offset correct. Although I think there's only one way to do it, really. You'd have to be quite the fool to do it the wrong way. How do these compare to Proline Swampers? I would say that they do not compare. You'd be better off with the Proline ones, if that's your preference. I think I have a set of those still somewhere here from when they first came out, which was a long time ago. I think right back when I got into the hobby. 
Your wife has a cyber orange one, so you bought her the Traxxas one for her birthday. That's pretty awesome. Does she like it? Yeah, the Pro Scale Light Kit is definitely a must have, in my opinion, for that Bronco. I think it looks so good. Okay. There's one done. Not a bad looking wheel. Plastic wheel though, I'm not a giant fan of. For a kit, I get it. But it's still kinda, kinda weak. The tire itself is soft enough. There's a lot of softness to it. It might actually be too soft and probably could be vented because the wheel itself is not vented. And then in fact, as if you squeeze it too hard, then the air doesn't go back in. So something to consider. The foam is very soft, way too soft. Anyway, that's a wheel and tire combo. What's next? We're moving on to the body, which we're not going to be doing tonight. Um, Cause there's a lot of trimming and drilling and I think yeah, all, all the holes have to be drilled. I don't think there are any existing holes made. Let's just take a look at it real quick. There it is. Chevy adjacent square body. Uh, it does have nice big plastic fenders that get added on and uh, mirrors and door handles and the bed isn't super deep, um, but there's no weird like angle in the Lexan there to keep it strong. So, you know, it's a good, decent looking square body. Um, and uh, what a mess my desk is. Ugh. Never see that again. And it fits on the chassis nicely, and with the inner fenders, it all looks pretty good. Um, I think it'll be nice. Lots of tuck on the tires. It's a nice wide body. It's definitely going, the clod body would be way too small, Matt. Uh, clod body is like 12th scale in comparison to this, which is more like 9th. So it wouldn't fit at all, unfortunately. Um, but um, yeah, that I think is pretty much going to do it. I don't think there's anything that I've missed. Uh, hex, hex is on the axles, but that's about all. There is a roof rack included. Um, and all the window masks, of course. Uh, G Made was kind enough to send along all the LEDs to go in all the lights. Uh, so there's like a there's a light bar. There's a standard light kit. There's a miniature light bar. There's a long light bar. Uh, the headlights are actually a warmer color, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to paint it red, Mike. Uh, I think um, Mr. Plow was more of a red truck than an orange one. Uh, unless that was like a joke about Josh, which probably was. Um, yeah, so there's lots of nice molded details for the body. Let's see if I can find those really quickly. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. So all the fenders are in there, front grill, uh, rear tail light buckets, front tail or front headlight buckets, all the light bars and stuff, good looking mirrors, it works. So it's going to be a decent looking uh, exterior for sure and um, we're going to have to get to that in another one. This is the G-Made GSO2F pickup Buffalo and uh, I think that's probably where we should probably end it for tonight, if I'm honest. I think that's kind of it. It's kind of nailed it. Let's get a better look at that chassis. Full screen. Here we go. Um, as you can see, the motor does sit pretty much in the same sort of location as the SCX-10-3. Um, about the same height. It could sit a little bit lower but just because of the way the transmission's built that's where it is uh, nice to have inner fenders front and rear nice 
softer molded plastic than the rest of the plastic in the chassis. Uh, same thing with the sliders, they're also a bit more flexible. Nice big electronics box that has a, a waterproof seal on it, I just didn't install it yet. So uh, that's nice to have that as well. It's very similar to like a Traxxas electronics box. Uh, the way the motor mounts is pretty cool and they left space, uh, if you can see that there, that's where you uh, unscrew this bolt and then the whole motor pops right off. It, it turns and then pops out. Imagine a six by six Ford Bronco. That sounds cool. Um, nice stainless links that I've added as part of the aftermarket bonuses that G-Mate included. Um, shorty battery tray, as I've installed here, you can also install a longer battery tray if that's more of to your liking, if you want to do long trail runs. Um, aluminum shock bodies, plastic caps. Um, not leaking so far, it might have just been some residue from before, so maybe we're okay there. Um, overall, it's a, it's a decent kit. It went together pretty well. It took longer because I'm not too familiar with it. I've only built one before. Um, but otherwise, pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing how this Spectrum 2-in-1 2300 kV motor does in this kit. Uh, the second speed, the, the high gear in this truck is exceptionally high. And actually does have a lot of speed. Uh, compared to, say, like the second gear on the SCX-10 III. Um, it's probably more on par with the Traxxas truck, so uh, definitely uh, got a, a higher end for sure. So uh, that's going to do it. That's the G-Made Buffalo GSO-2F, which is the pickup version. Uh, in an upcoming, maybe, you know what, we'll wrap this one up on a What's on the Bench episode so we can get a look at it there. And uh, there may be a review and running video to go with it. Although, because it is the same chassis as the SUV model that I've already done, uh, that might not be there might not be a significant improvement. I mean, a little bit of, a little bit more or less Lexan, depending on how you look at it. Uh, certainly a lower center of gravity. Um, so maybe it is worth a test. We'll give it a give it a look. Put a comment down below if you want me to try that out. Otherwise, that's going to do it. Thanks to GMate for sending that along. Much appreciated. And uh, we'll wrap that body up. And uh, you'll probably see it on Instagram before you'll see it anywhere else. So thank you for hanging out with me tonight. It's been a blast. I had an awesome time. You guys are great. Uh, much appreciated to the following. Uh, Carlos DeVia, Blind Guy RC, Jeremiah Salberg, and Perry G. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, bumpers. Uh, bumpers are part of this kit. I just didn't uh, get them out. I don't know that there's a rear bumper, but there is definitely a front bumper, um, which is kind of big. Side by side what? Side by side them. I don't, uh, that's been given or sold to someone already. Someone else has the Buffalo SUV, so you won't be getting a side by side on that, unfortunately. Uh, here's the front bumper, in case you wanted to see that big um, but it looks good looks good on there the way that this truck works uh, there's no body pins it does tuck into there and then I think it the whole front end of the truck uh, ties into this so yeah a short wrap-up video we can definitely do that I think that's gonna do it though guys thanks very much uh, we'll see you on the next one I'll be back live next Tuesday doing something and then again Wednesday night with Josh and hopefully get uh, a video on the mud truck out before then. Thanks everybody. Have a great evening. Have a good rest of your weekend as well. And if you're Canadian, happy Thanksgiving. Take care everyone. Love you. Bye.